I think it's safe to say that if modern gaming is oversaturated with gritty, realistic shooters, then gaming in the early 90s was oversaturated with animal mascots and various platformers. As a request from David the Gameboob Savage, we're going to be looking at one such platformer today, Tiny Toon Adventures Buster's Hidden Treasure. Initially released for the Mega Drive, Buster's Hidden Treasure is a surprisingly well-made affair, which borrows many elements from other platformers of the time, such as Mario's world map, and being able to get Buster up to a speed where his animation resembles a certain blue hedgehog. When Buster is moving without any momentum behind him, he can feel very stiff, and jumps in particular will make you feel like there is an invisible force acting against you. However, at full speed, Buster's leaps are much more impressive, but you will have no idea where you are going to land. Because of this, the controls do take a tiny adjusting tune. Sorry, I'll never do that again. At any rate, after some time with the game, it won't stop you being able to make precision jumps when you need to. Environments include a forest, a volcano, an icy mountain, a pirate ship, and your typical mechanical evil lair. The world map and level count are actually quite impressive, and there are multiple exits to some levels, allowing you to not only branch out and create alternate paths through the game, but also offering replay value. Naturally, whenever you have multiple exits to a level, you also have multiple paths through said level, and this definitely makes the layout of every stage far more engaging. There are underwater segments, the bane of platformers, but this one performs reasonably well. It doesn't get too frustrating thanks to smart placement of the enemies and traps, and Buster's underwater controls are sometimes tighter than they are on land. Every stage will have natural hazards to try and stop you, of course. Platforms that fall out from under you, moving walls that can crush you, spikes that will one-hit kill you, the standard platforming fare. To accompany these are, of course, regular enemies that come in all shapes and sizes with varying tactics. They all fit the Tiny Toons universe and get the right balance in terms of challenge. You will also have to contend with various bosses in the form of Buster's friends. They have been brainwashed by the helmets they wear on their heads, and the idea is to attack the mad scientists until the helmet either falls off or explodes. Standard platforming fare here. Observe the pattern, avoid the attacks, wait for the opening, defeat. Naturally, the game will get far more difficult towards the end, with the final levels being a test for even a platforming veteran. The game will outright want you dead, and there are a few things you can do to try and save yourself. First of all, you can increase the size of your health bar, which initially has three hearts. Second of all, you can call in one of Buster's buddies to eliminate all enemies on screen. And finally, the game has a password system, though it doesn't record the size of your health bar. Buster can also do a sliding dash at full speed, but really I couldn't find a practical use for it. The game is presented beautifully. The graphics are all vibrant, colourful, and full of life. They scream Tiny Toons, and it's always clear as to what is a platform and what is merely eye candy, so they never interfere with the gameplay. The game does have its aforementioned flaws, but looking at the overall package, this is clearly one of the better platformers available for the Mega Drive, and anyone who was a fan of that era would be insane not to pick this up. It's quite cheap too, a quick search at the usual suspects, and you'll find you can net a cartridge-only copy for around £3.50, approximately $5.60, and a complete box copy will only set you back by about £6, around $9.60. You can probably spend more than that on lunch today. As always, this has been Afro Blue. If anyone has any more requests, please let me know. I can't promise I'll review all of them, but I will try and do as many as I can.